option of both. Finite number of continuous turns of a conducting wire wound in a helical shape represents a solenoid. We learnt earlier that the magnetic field lines of a bar magnet are similar to the field lines of a solenoid. Hence, a bar magnet can be assumed to be the same as a large number of current carrying loops placed adjacent to each other. The two faces of the solenoid are similar to the poles of a bar magnet. The field lines leave one face of the solenoid into its exterior and hence this face of the solenoid is like the north pole of the bar magnet. The field lines enter the solenoid at the other face and hence this face is like the south pole of the bar magnet. Thus, the magnetic field lines of a solenoid are continuous closed loops similar to the field lines in the case of a bar magnet. We learnt earlier that if a bar magnet is cut into two pieces perpendicular to its length, two small bar magnets are formed. Similarly, if a solenoid is cut perpendicular to its length into two parts, two solenoids of smaller length are obtained. The two solenoids produce weak magnetic fields around them. Thus, each smaller solenoid acts like a small bar magnet. To make it more clear that the field due to a solenoid is similar to that of a bar magnet, we calculate the magnetic field induction B at a distant point on the axis of the solenoid and compare with the magnetic field induction at a point on the axial line of a bar magnet. Consider a solenoid of finite length with n turns per unit length. Let A be the radius, 2L be the length and I be the current passing through the solenoid. Let the solenoid be placed such that the axis of the solenoid is along the x-axis of the coordinate system and its center coincides with the origin. Then the left end of the solenoid lies at the position minus L and its right end at plus L. Let us consider a point P on the axis of the solenoid and let R be the distance from the center of the solenoid to that point. To calculate the magnetic field induction B at the point P on the axial line of the solenoid, consider a small element of the solenoid of thickness dx located at a distance of x from the center of the solenoid. Then the distance of the point P from the small element of the solenoid is r minus x. As n is the number of turns per unit length, the number of turns in the small element of the solenoid is equal to number of turns per unit length into length of the small element of the solenoid. That is equal to n into dx. We learnt earlier that the magnetic induction B on the axis of a current carrying circular loop at a distance x from the center of the loop is equal to mu naught i a square by 2 into x square plus a square whole part 3 by 2. Thus, the magnetic induction due to the current passing through the small element of the solenoid at the point P on the axial line dB is equal to mu naught n dx i a square by 2 into r minus x square plus a square whole part 3 by 2. The total magnetic induction due to the solenoid can be calculated by dividing the total length of the solenoid into number of small elements and by integrating the magnetic inductions due to all the small elements we get the total magnetic induction due to the solenoid. When we consider the small elements of the solenoid from one end to the other, the distance of the elements from the center of the solenoid varies from minus L to L. Thus, the total magnetic induction at the point P due to the solenoid is B is equal to integral minus L to L dB.
that is equal to integral minus L to L. Mu naught N dx I A square by 2 into R minus X square plus A square whole part 3 by 2. But I A N and mu naught are constant. Hence, the magnetic induction B is equal to mu naught N I A square by 2 into integral minus L to L dx by R minus X square plus A square whole power 3 by 2. When we consider the point on the axis of the solenoid at a large distance, R is much greater than A and R is much greater than X. Hence, we neglect the terms A and X in the denominator of the expression for B. Then, B is equal to mu naught n i a square by 2 into integral minus L to L dx by R cube. But the distance of the point P from the origin R is constant. Thus, B is equal to mu naught n i a square by 2 R cube into integral minus L to L dx. On integrating and substituting the limits, we get the magnetic induction B is equal to mu naught n i a square by 2 r cube into 2 l. By multiplying the numerator and denominator of the expression with pi and rearranging the terms in the expression, we get the magnetic induction B is equal to mu naught by 2 pi into n i 2 l pi a square by r cube. We learnt earlier that a current carrying loop behaves like a magnetic dipole and its dipole moment is given by m is equal to i into a where a is the area vector of the loop. The solenoid consists of n number of loops per unit length. i is the current through the solenoid and a is the radius of each loop. Thus, area a of each loop of the solenoid is pi into a square. The total number of loops in the solenoid is n into 2L and hence the magnetic moment of the solenoid M is equal to n 2L i a which is equal to n 2L i pi a square. Substituting M for the terms in the expression for magnetic induction B, we get the magnetic induction B is equal to mu naught by 2 pi into m by r cube. On multiplying the numerator and denominator with 2, we get the magnetic induction B is equal to mu naught by 4 pi into 2 m by r cube. This is the same expression that is used to find the magnetic induction at a distant point from the center of a bar magnet on its axial line. Thus, a current carrying solenoid and a bar magnet produce similar magnetic fields. Therefore, a solenoid is equivalent to a bar magnet and their magnetic moments are also equal. If the magnitude of the induction they produce at given distant points from their centers on their axial lines is equal. The Earth abounds with a variety.